Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church and our worship uh, service this morning. I am glad you are all here. A reminder that we have our annual meeting of the congregation directly following this service of worship. So I hope you plan on attending. You should have a little packet um, that comes with that. And I hope you had a chance to review that at home. It was emailed to you last week. Uh, Bible study will continue tomorrow at 1 p.m. And we will be reading up to page 186 in Jody Picot's The Book of Two Ways. So if you would like to join us, even if you haven't read the book and you want to come for a lovely discussion, it's, I think it's been very engaging and people have been sharing their stories and it's been good. Um, Enrichment will be meeting on Tuesday at 2 p.m. A reminder that we're in the new year and we have per capita that we collect. So if you would write a check to the church for $50 for each person in your family that would be counted in per capita, that helps us pay both the presbytery costs and some of our liability insurance. And if you could put uh, per capita in the memo, that would be great. Um, on February 6th, you have a choice because of What's going on with Omicron? We are gonna go through the liturgy of communion, but it will be a silent communion. So if you wanna have elements, bread and juice, then I would invite you to stay online and do them at home like we did when we were all online. If you wanna to come to church and be with people for worship, I will be leading the communion fellowship here and you can do that but we will not pass the bread and wine. So that's your choice. It'll be a silent time for you to commune with God without the elements if you're in church, okay? So those are your choice. That's your choice for next week as you think about it. Um, let us go ahead and prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust from my youth. Be known by God. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. Be known by God. My praise of continually of you.
be seated. If we say we have no sin, then the truth is not in us, and we deceive ourselves. But when we confess our sins to a God who is faithful and just, then we will be cleansed of all our unrighteousness. Let us come before our God with the prayer of confession. God of all creation, we have wandered during the course of the past week. Living out of thoughtless habit, our speech has become like the sound of loud gongs, our harsh and angry ways like the clash of cymbals. We have forgotten the sound of peace and the practice of loving. We have forgotten the beauty of creation, which you have entrusted to us. Forgive us, Lord, as once again we turn to you, wanting to practice love, wanting to be your righteous people, wanting to live in the hope of your peace. Hear our prayers of personal shortcomings and create in us a clean heart. Amen. God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. We live, know, and trust that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven.
Thank you both. That was lovely. We get to share our joys and concerns with our congregation, things that are happening that we would like to lift up in prayer. Um, I have several of them or other people who would like to add to our list. Michelle? So Michelle's family friend, Roy, was taken to the hospital for COVID-related issues. So we will keep him in our prayers. Um, Gwen? This is for our first great-grandbaby that was born 4.59 this morning. Oh, wow. wow. And name? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. We're still in limbo. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Gwen and Dick welcome their first great grand baby born at four something this morning and we're waiting on a name and healthy and mother's doing well. Good news. Good news. Um, other things that we'd like to pray about? Yeah, Cody? Yeah, I, I'd like prayers for my sister. Um, she came through the Whipple surgery okay, but they have found that it's an aggressive cancer and they couldn't remove the entire tumor because it's growing into her vein. So please, please be in prayer for her. Her name is Mark. So we will continue to pray for Cody's sister, Marla, who has an aggressive cancer that was not completely operated upon. Susan? Yes, um, for a friend of mine, um, her sister is fat and she's having a real tough time calming down. They had to put her in a home and she has a lot of noise. Okay. So uh, Sue's friend, Pat, who is having a, a lot of anxiety right now with the transition. Can you, Lori? Uh, so Lori asked for prayers for a friend of the family named Matt, who is fighting for his life. And then, of course, we are praying for uh, David and Sharon. Or I don't know, are we to that point? Dawn's over there doing other things. So I'm going to see if I can see everybody. Oh, go ahead, Sandy, while Dawn does that. Surgery on 
Okay. So Sandy asked for prayers for her friend Lou, who had a skin graft after cancer surgery, and Joni, who had cancer on her nose, and that went well. Um, yep. Prayers for my brother Jack, who went through a bunch of chemotherapy earlier this week, and then he did the slow six hour stem cell transfusion thing, and now he has to sit in the hospital for the next two or three weeks to see what happens. So prayers for that all goes well, and also prayers for his patients. <laughs> So uh, Don just a or asked for prayers for his brother, Jack, who has had chemotherapy and is doing uh, stem cell and has to be in the hospital while that takes effect. So he's got a two or three week wait. Um, and a celebration, we see David, well, I see David, everybody can't see David, but David and Sharon are here. So do you wanna say anything or? Oh, sorry, wait, let me. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, we're very grateful. David is doing well, still very slow. There's a lot of machines and contraptions and hookups and unhookups and, and uh, he's moving around and he's doing, he's being a great patient. So we're expecting good progress. And thank you all thank for you, your, your cards, calls, uh, prayers. We appreciate it all. Glad to hear that good news. Anyone else online? Carolyn? Yeah, Stephen's been sick off and on for the last couple of weeks uh, with basically what sent him to the hospital last month twice. Um, only now we're not going to the hospital. And um, it, <clears throat> the worst part of it is the fatigue that has come with all of this. He's just uh, not himself at all. He can barely get around the house. So I would just ask for prayers for that the doctors would be able to figure out what the heck is going on and do something about it, so. Thank you. We'll keep your husband, Stephen, in our prayers. Thank you. Okay, so let me go through just, uh, Ron, can we ask for prayers for you? Is that an okay thing? Yeah, you can pray for the the second time go around on this uh, uh, cancer surgery, uh, which is coming up in the middle of, the, of this month. February sixteenth. Okay, so we will keep Ron in our prayers as he goes in for cancer, second cancer surgery. I did want to let you know that um, I saw Maxine this week. She is doing well, but she did have another slight fall, but she's still in good spirits and doing well. Um, David's knee surgery, continued prayers for those who are going through um, breast cancer treatment, that's Judy and Leslie. And then I heard from uh, Ramila this week and she's on the line that um, Nadia is doing better. And if she hits some attainable uh, goals, she might be going home. They're at least having that conversation from the NICU. So we have been praying for baby Nadia for a long time. So that's a joy. Um, any other prayers? Okay, let's look to God in prayer. Lord, you have gathered us under your wing in this time of worship, a time of remembering that you, that we are known by you, that you are the one who sees us in our darkest times and in our moments of joy. And we are so grateful for your love and compassion and care. We pray now for our larger world, for the tensions that are happening or potentially happening over in Ukraine, for all of the anxiety that that creates in so many people and what that might look like. We pray for all of our world as we try to get through this COVID um, pandemic and have a sense of 
having a way forward that doesn't just always feel like, well, can I do that or not? We ask that you be with uh, Pat, who is a friend of Sue's, as she is going through uh, a transition and it is creating a great deal of anxiety in her heart. May you give her a sense of peace. We pray too for Stephen, for Carolyn's husband, who has been in and out of the hospital of late, that the doctors would figure out the fatigue that he is enduring and get a good diagnosis and have that be treated. We pray for Jack, Don's brother, who has undergone chemo, uh, chemotherapy and is now um, awaiting uh, the time of the stem cells to take effect. So he has several weeks in the hospital. Be with him, have the stem cells do their magic, have Jack have a sense of patience and your peace, and let all be in a alignment in your healing. We ask your blessing upon Joni, who is a friend of Sandy's, who had uh, a cancer removed on her nose. For Lou, who is also a friend of Sandy, who had a skin graft after a surgery for cancer. Be with Matt, who is fighting for his life, who is a friend of Lori and Jack's. He's been in the hospital and um, needs your strength and your healing and your compassion, Lord. Be with Roy, who is dealing with COVID and all of the um, ramifications that that means. We celebrate that Nadia is getting stronger each and every day and that the doctors are talking about the possibility of her coming home if she continues to meet her um, progress marks. Be with Judy and Leslie and those who are um, recovering and under treatment for breast cancer. Give them your healing and your wholeness, Lord, so that they have the sense of your peace as they walk this journey. We celebrate with David and Sharon for his successful knee surgery and that he would continue to be encouraged and strengthened as his mobility continues and his pain subsides. We ask your presence to be with Maxine as she had a slight fall but continues to be in good spirits. We celebrate that she has um, lived to the fullest in so many ways and that we ask your blessing to be upon her in these days. We ask for your blessing upon Ron as he <clears throat> goes in for a second bladder cancer surgery at, in the middle of February, and to be with Cody's sister, Marla, who is um, dealing with an aggressive cancer that surgery was not able to fully um, uh, catch and remove. We celebrate with Dick and Gwen the arrival of their first great grandbaby, and we await the name of this joyous bundle of um, love, and we are grateful that the love of the family it continues to extend from the time that the one was born and brought in to conception to this time now, Lord. We are grateful for you have called us and loved us and known each one of us from the moment we come into the world. All this we ask in your precious son's name, the same Savior and Lord who taught us to say when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Join me in the prayer for illumination. Wondrous spirit, gather our minds that they may be one with you. Open our ears that they may hear your word. Soften our hearts that they may receive your wisdom. Speak to us, for we, your servants, are listening. Amen. The first lesson this morning is from Jeremiah, the first chapter, verses 4 to 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson today comes to us from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the very familiar love chapter that many of us have heard many times. Listen now for God's word to you. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clangy cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we only know in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Parker's third grade teacher, Mrs. Zeltman, gave him a wonderful assignment. Well, to the whole class, actually. To find an object over 50 years old and then to learn about it and the person it belonged to. The best part of it for me as a parent was showing Parker some of the many treasures in our home that are well over 50 years old like the crystal antique pitcher that sat on my mother's table, my great-grandfather's beaver skin top hat, or the old family pictures like the one of the funeral of a soldier who died at Gettysburg. These artifacts had not been of great importance to Parker until his project. I even got out a quilt that my mother made when I was eight, the same age that Parker was at the time and a high school jacket that my mom hand painted when she, uh, that she and I both wore during our high school years. But the item that Parker decided to write about was my father's World War II naval scarf. 
My father passed away when I was three, so my boys never knew him. But I so enjoyed telling stories about him, his family, and the kind of man that he was. Before this par project, Parker knew very little about my dad. But through stories, Parker learned how charming, musical, and funny my dad was. Our Old Testament lesson tells the story of the call of Jeremiah and how he was known by God. He is one of the major prophets who warned the nation of Judah of the impending doom from the Babylonians. His prophetic words given during the beginning of the 6th century BCE ultimately did not save the people or their temple from destruction in 586. Yet we see in Jeremiah's calling God's intimate relationship with him. For while he was in his mother's womb and before he was even born, God knew Jeremiah. This idea begs the question of predestination and free will. As Calvinists and good Presbyterians, we are known for predestination or God preordaining certain people to belong to God. And if God calls us in such an all-encompassing way, how would one have free will? Yet we do. God can and does lead people in the direction of God's choosing. Yet at every turn, we get to choose to deny that path or surrender to God's will. A good way to think about this is when we see someone whose vocation seems to match their personhood to a T. For example, could you imagine Bob Hope not telling jokes? Or Leonard Bernstein not composing and conducting music? When vocation and personhood match so undeniably, that person has found their calling. We might not find our calling right away, but when we listen to the things that truly bring us energy and excitement and then move towards them, I believe God is leading us to our calling. When our wills align with God's, then we are heeding God's call. But sometimes our doubts and fears and shortcomings get in the way. For Jeremiah, his excuse that it was that he was only a boy. He tried to get out of God's mission for his life, for he knew there would be great opposition. If you were called by God and did not want to do it, what would your excuse be? I am only... Uh, I can't serve because I am. Yet whatever you might have placed in that space, God has the answer, the empowerment to help, the way to redirect your path. Our New Testament lesson, a tribute to love, is often recited at weddings. And these words of love do inspire and ignite hope in our capacity to love. But, it true, but to truly understand Paul's writing, we need to understand the conflicts in the church that precipitated this teaching. The church in Corinth was quarreling over spiritual gifts, who had them, and how they were being used. The overvaluation of spiritual gifts produced divisiveness. But the more excellent way, is for the body of Christ to uplift each, each member in love. Paul then reminds them, whatever you have in the world, faith, spiritual gifts, or knowledge, without love, it is for naught. As a child, I remember the phrase, love is, and then dot, dot, dot. Do you remember those posters? They had, came with several answers. Love is not what you say, but what you do. Another being, love is never having to say you're sorry. Now, I do believe that we need to make apologies when called for. But for a while, in the 70s, we tried to figure out love. 
But the search for the meaning of love was to take it out of an idle state. For love is not stagnant. The love of scripture, the love that transcends is a love that acts. Love refuses to stoop to petty retaliation. Love demonstrates patience and kindness, shuns competitiveness, resists keeping score. Love remains hopeful and endures forever. The culmination of all this talk about the body of Christ in love is to be more fully known. To move from seeing dimly to then being able to be seen face to face. Have you ever had an important conversation on the phone and you felt like you were missing something because you couldn't see the other person's response? You could not judge how your words were being received. That is seeing dimly in a modern day context. How much better it is to see the person face to face. For then your response, as well as the other person's, are communicated, have impact on the way we are understanding or we are understood and understand. This reminds me of a line from St. Francis of Assisi's prayer. Lord, grant me that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood to love than to be loved. Through comfort, understanding, and love, we are known. Our efforts demonstrate who we are, and in sharing these emotional gifts, our true self is made known. And this idea of seeing someone face-to-face -face has long scriptural tradition, mostly in being known by God. As you recall, Moses the one who led God's people out of bondage and delivered the Ten Commandments, saw the face of God and lived. His skin shone because of his in intimate encounter with God. Because of his connection to God, being known by God, we have been gifted with a greater understanding of our holy and awesome creator. In the New Testament, when Saul encounters the risen Christ face to face, he is told, God has chosen you to know God's will, to see the righteous one, and to hear his voice. Knowing Christ and being known by Christ transformed him from being the one persecuting Jesus to the one of the founders of the early church, who we now know as Paul. Parker learned so much about his grandfather in one night than he had in his entire life up until that point. Yet there was so much more to share, so much more to know, so much more to integrate. For we become the people we are because of those around us who love us, who shape us, who share their faith with us. For just like Parker will never meet my dad on this side of heaven, we will never meet Jesus on this side of eternity. But when we share our faith stories, when we live out the calling Christ has on our lives, when we proclaim the way God's love has touched our lives, then we will know, we will know as we have been fully known. For God knew you in the womb. God knows you now. When I started thinking about this idea that God knew us before we were born, it reminded me of the one request I have been told that my birth mother made for both myself and my half-brother. That we should be adopted by a Protestant family. That one simple request greatly shaped the person that I would become. And the one is one of the reasons that I stand, well, I'm sitting, I sit here in front of you today. My birth mother died and I will never meet her, but her commitment to her faith 
and her desire for her children to be raised in the faith had profound consequences on my life. She knew me in her womb like God knew Jeremiah. I have often found great comfort in being known by God before I was born. It is this deep knowing that God provides, that undergirds faith and gives hope. But now that I am known by people I am biologically related to, like my aunts and uncles and siblings, I feel even more fully known. When all of this is said and done because you have been known by God since you were born and in every station of your life, you are known and truly, truly understood. Because you are fully known, because you are fully loved, God will empower you to love in the most indescribable ways, this most gracious way. Trust that you are known and loved. Go forth in love. Amen. If you would join with me and stand for our affirmation of faith that is found in your bulletin. What is it we believe? We are a community of faith. We share a vision of God, a God whose spirit is love, accessible to all yet beyond our knowing, the source of all being, the way leading to wholeness, the spirit which pervades everything. We tell the sacred stories again and again of God, the creator, the almighty, who made everything that is and saw that it was good. Of Jesus of Nazareth, who in history lived among us, healed the afflicted, taught, suffered, and died. In the mystery of the resurrection, he continues to live more profoundly through the ages. The incarnation of love, the Christ to whom his disciples have responded, my Lord and my God. He shows us the way which leads to the reconciliation, saying, whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. It is the way of love, compassion, justice, forgiveness, and peace. Of the spirit, the breath, the wind of God, the giver of life, the holy wisdom, who inspires the people of God to cry out for justice for the powerless and oppressed, to see the presence of God in every created thing, and to respond with love. Amen. We have been blessed in so many ways that we have been known by God and are known by God. Let us give our gifts either uh, before or after church in the uh, donation box that is in the courtyard. Let us soon come to our Lord.
Pray with me. Lord, you have blessed us with such love and goodness. We wonder at the beauty of your creation. We thank you for the sustenance of food and drink, and we cherish the love of family and friends. Lord, we offer these gifts to you with thankful hearts and in joyous praise. As we give of our money and resources, we surrender our whole being to you in worship and adoration. Lord, may this offering extend the work of your kingdom in your church, your community, and into the beautiful world which you have made. Amen. I would like to call this meeting of the congregation to order, and will you bow with me in prayer? Eternal and loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather and review the year that has just passed. We thank you for the ways that you are steadfast in this congregation, the ways that you are healing the members that we have, the ways that you enliven us with your spirit and give us hope and love each and every day. Be with us as we attend to the business at hand. Amen. Uh, we now have 